Hello, I'm Larato Matlala and this is the ninth edition of Creatives Under Lockdown, where we focus on issues affecting artists. He was busy sketching during a Setswana class in high school, paying no attention to the lesson. And when his teacher realized, instead of reprimanding him, he advised him to consider a career in the arts. And thus, a seed was planted. This week, I'm in conversation with fine artist Gabelo Litwin. Gabelo, growing up, did you always want to be an artist? I mean, most people are not exposed to careers in the arts. How did you learn about it? I would be absolutely right if I say that as a child, as growing up, I always wanted to become an artist. For the mere reason that I was not exposed to this art career thing, just like most people are not. So I had to do some researches. I had to contact and network with other artists in order to come up with a decision of becoming an artist. It was not just a decision that was impulsive. It was a process thing. But even if I could have not become a professional artist, that doesn't mean that I was not going to be an artist. I mean, there's huge difference between professional artist and artist. I believe that art it is something that is installed in you, not something that you learn. It is something that you improve, not something that you just start learning from anyone else. So as a child, I've always been good, which I knew, because from my primary school, I always used to get compliments from my teachers, classmates, and people from my neighborhood, to a point whereby some of my classmates would ask me to do them some drawings, and they would pay me for that. But by then, I never thought of converting it into a profession. I was just doing it for that little amount of money they were giving me and also for fun because doing art it brings me a lot of joy it's, it's like a source of my joy i mean there's no greater feeling like looking at a complete piece and saying wow did i really do this so that gave me a lot of pleasure except for the fact that i wanted money i mean after all when we are children the only thing that we chase is happiness because of that's the only thing that we prioritize so i always prioritize happiness which the source of my happiness was that art I did. And I started doing art each and every day. Most parents push for their children to go into more traditional careers, you know, being a teacher, police officer, accountant, or even a lawyer. What was your family's response when you told them that you are going to study fine arts? I honestly agree with you that uh... Most parents, they do push their children to go for more traditional careers. And for me, it is well understandable. For the fact that our parents are and they will always remain protective. And I believe that we need to give them credit for that. However, mm -hmm. there are times where we need to make our own decisions. And me deciding to become an artist was the time where i had to be stubborn with what i wanted and push away whatever they wanted or whatever they said to me i mean my parents were not happy with the choice that i made particularly my mother but as for my father he always had an artistic eye since he's a carpenter so it was not that difficult for him to accept that his son wants to become an artist uh, nevertheless, I did not harshly judge my mother for that because they are the generation that was not exposed to particular uh, careers other than traditional careers. And honestly, just like any other person, we usually believe in what we see. And unfortunately, in our communities, there are common and rare professions and our parents will always relate to those common careers. Hence, they will always push us to further into those uh, common careers. And then again, it is because most parents want their children to follow in their footsteps if they have been successful because they have experience and skills in that particular field. So they are so proud of themselves and end up wanting to create smaller vision of themselves. And again, if they are not successful in that particular field, they will always make sure that their children do not follow in their footsteps 
just to prevent them from experiencing any difficulties or any challenges that they have witnessed themselves. But as for me, my parents finally accepted when I was when I was doing my second year. That's when I started selling and doing commissions. And my mother particularly, again, that's when she started being easy on me and eventually accepted that that was what I wanted to be. And up to this day, she doesn't really bother me anymore or she doesn't really criticize what I'm doing because of so far it's been productive. And that's how I won their votes. So for someone who doesn't know what fine art is, Please explain what it is and what fine artists do. I think the better way to explain what fine artists do it is to first explain what is fine art. When we're talking of fine art, we commonly use the word creative or visual art. And those are what we call fine artists. Fine artists, they use different techniques to create art, such as weaving, painting, glass blowing, ceramics, and sculpting. When you're talking about sculpting, we are referring to what normal people or common people call statues. The Mandela statues or Tambo statues, those are what we call sculptures in art language. And the very same artists, they strive to develop new methods or ideas for making their art. And again, they create art to send a message through their work or simply provoke a feeling into the person observing their work. Particularly, they are trying to challenge the viewer's eye on how the viewer sees or interprets their artwork. And I think it is very, very interesting because of we as artists, we don't use words, we use images rather. Images are referring to paintings that we do. There's this huge misunderstanding that art is just about drawing. Most of us, when we grew up, we thought the word art means someone's drawing. And to come to think of it, this is a very, very broad way that can be and it has been used each and every day of our lives. And some of us, even some of these people, they practice art each and every day, but because of they are not aware that this is art. So they don't see themselves as artists. But what I believe is that most of us are born as artists. Like I've said, art is very broad. So whenever I'm, I'm talking about artists, don't quickly rush to drawing, painting or whatsoever. There's so many things in art. We have textiles, architects. At some point, I think they are also artists, those people. So these very same people are practicing these things each and every day. We have interior designers, and then we have uh, clothes designers. So these are artists. So we practice these things each and every day. But because of we are not aware that this is art, so we don't consider it as art. That is why sometimes the word art comes to us as a surprise or something that is unusual. So. The more we gain knowledge on this thing, it's going to be much easier for us to understand what art is. And as for me, I'm majoring in drawing and painting. In my primary mediums are paintings. Paintings means oil or acrylic paintings and ink on canvas. But my typical medium is ball pen, point pen. Hence, I call myself Kabelele Twini B big as in big stationer on Instagram. So ball pen happens to be my best medium so far. And I've been trying to improve on that. And later maybe I can consider other mediums as well. But for now I'm focusing on using ball pen and then perfecting that as well. So tell me a little bit about your creative process and what inspires you. I have always enjoyed making things with my own hands. I mean, even as a child, I played with my father's tools and some wood cutoffs that he would leave lying around. And I would try to seriously make sure that whatever object that I was doing would look as accurate as possible. And for some reasons, I've always been attracted to all sorts of unusual objects. And I would go around picking up this very same object. I'm referring to objects like stones, metals, and some interesting stuff. By those objects, I was trying to interact with the world using my sense of touch because of it has always been very important to me. Like in school, I used to enjoy arts and culture classes. I could sit and create or draw for hours without getting any tired. And if they had taught things like printmaking,
making, I would most probably jump to it straight away because as soon as I got to university and discovered the joys of the printmaking studio, I was so hooked up. I've always been interested in printmaking as well, but for some reasons, I cannot practice that from home because of, I mean, I don't have the material, I don't have machines to make sure that I practice that. I'm also fascinated by the freedom to do what makes me happy each and every day. Being able to inspire and delight people through my work and the joy of sharing and creating in life as a whole. As for my inspiration, I'm mostly inspired by African cultures and my aim it is to preserve African images and values through the art that I create. I am also inspired by young children and elders because I believe that children are so close to nature and they possess spiritual knowledge and for that I believe that human progress and civilizations are corrupting forces. Hence I desire to return to innocence, the purity and the perfection of children. So because of when we grow up we become responsible for certain things and the way we behave and the way we handle ourselves changes because of we move from wanting to be happy to wanting to make somebody happy so that is why i always say that i want to return to the my childhood because back then it was so easy for me that i just wanted to be happy not to consider any actions that i was taking unlike now whereby whatever that i plan or whatever i want to do i have to seriously consider the aftermath of that things what are some of the projects that you've been involved in and what has been your highlight so far i've been involved in several projects national and international I've been involved in projects like Fazu project, which was about creating artworks for Pretoria Zoo. It took place in 2015 and 2016. In the very same year, I made it to the top 100 for Tamim Yale Finat Awards, which is a art contest that is taking place annually in Johannesburg. 2017, I was involved in the University of Technology for second and third year at students, if I'm not mistaken. And then again, in 2017, I held my own exhibition in my local area where the aim was to motivate artists who are interested in fine art. And it was a very successful occasion. And then 2019, I was invited by the Depot Gallery to showcase my work in the US. And then later that year, I was also selected to showcase my work again in the US under Spectrum Miami at Fair. But unfortunately, for some reasons, I could not attend that. And then 2019, again, I was uh, featured in What is Art magazine for the month November and December. And as for 2020, I haven't really been that active because of I'm still feathering with my studies. I continued doing my studies for the year 2020, so I haven't been that much active. But that doesn't mean that I stopped doing my artworks. Actually, I have most of my artworks that I did for the year are much better or are higher than the artworks I did before, like before the previous years. So which means that I've been producing a lot of work for the year 2020 than I've been producing for the previous years. And as for my highlight thus far would be Tamim Nyele Awards. It is not exactly the best that I've done, but it is important because of that is where everything started. That was when I got hope and that was when I started to realize that, okay, there's life into this thing again. And that is why it will always remain my highlight regardless of what I'm about to come across or whatsoever because of that is where I come from and where I'm going it is not as much as delighting as where I began. You know careers in the arts are full of uncertainty. What gave you the confidence to pursue a career in the arts? Honestly there's always first time for everything and for that particular time I was the first in the family to do something that they weren't comfortable with and as for me i am one person who's stubborn and i enjoy proving a point where need be not just proving a point everywhere and at first when i went for art career i didn't actually focus on the challenges that i was putting myself through rather i just wanted to be happy i just wanted to become an artist and i just wanted to do 
what brings me joy each and every day but later onwards that's when i started to feel or understand what my parents were talking about their criticism it was coming into a reality and for some moments i felt like quitting i felt like giving up and i even thought of changing my majors for that reason but as i wanted to prove a point i had to pull myself together and made sure that i proved my parents wrong that yes there is life into this thing called art and one of the difficulties was questions like what am i going to do with art where am i going to work and who is going to hire me which is the reason why most of us go for traditional careers i mean there was no other shortcut for that because the thing is these questions will always come into space whenever we grow up that is the difference between being a child and becoming an adult i mean as a child like we've mentioned we just want to be happy we just want to be content but as an adult i wanted to have money in order to take care of my family and myself and with the directions that everything was going i started doubting art as a career and one thing that i liked about my lectures was that they were always honest with us and told us the truth as it was they didn't bother or hesitate to say the honest truth to us they didn't decorate any way that came out from their mouths and that in the other way i believe prepared me for the worst that was coming my way and eventually i had to to accept that this is what i chose and this is what i'm going to do and this is what i'm going to die doing for the rest of my life and from that mentality i looked for positive opportunities within the career i did further research on how to maintain an artistic life of all the pieces you have produced so far which is your favorite and why that is a very difficult question considering the amount of work that I've done so far but I would say that my favorite work would be Munna which means a man it is a piece I recently did and it is a depiction of a man sitting on a bench and he is wearing vintage clothes in the background there are portraits of bruised women the piece is special because it is actually dedicated to my girlfriend it is about gender based violence so the story behind it is that while i was working on it my girlfriend saw my status on whatsapp where i was talking about gender based violence and she started accusing me of promoting gender based violence the way she interpreted or understood what i wrote on app of which was not the case and i was not even close to promoting any gender based violence instead i was trying to communicate with other men to stop abusing and killing women all of a sudden she started attacking me and telling me how she's disappointed in me and what hurt me the most was that when she said that she is starting to feel scared and that really 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 touched me and that's when i felt like I should do something about it and the only way that I could do something about it was showing my emotions on the very same piece that I was doing already. We talked about it, I elaborated to her what I actually meant and that was when she realized and understood what I exactly meant. She later apologized for that, but my primary aim was just to draw a man seated on a bench, but not to touch on any gender-based violence. But ever since that accusations, I felt like adding portraits of bruised women in the background just to feel much better or just to show her that I didn't mean it in a bad way. What I wanted to communicate if other men was to stop abusing and killing women. What are some of your future goals career-wise? One of my goals is to own my own gallery space or my own studio where local artists will learn more about art, where I'm going to help them become good artists without having to struggle like I did. Because like for instance myself, it wasn't that easy for me to access these kinds of things places. So for them it's going to be much easier because of I will be their, their motivation and that motivation wouldn't be that far-fetched unlike myself. So that as well is going to help my community as well. Uh, basically what I mean is that I'm trying to bring art to my place. I'm trying to localize it. And then the other 
goal it is to work with international and national artists like Nelson Makamu, Lindo Zwani, Sizwe Koza, Inam Bosoka, and Nel Shigli, who's from the US. So those are the artists that I look up to. It will really be an honor to work with those artists. What is your message to young fine artists? The message I can give to the young artists it is that they must do further research, they must also plan properly, they must be prepared for any challenges, they need to be strategic about their goals and dreams, and they shouldn't ever act impulsive. And they need to also take time when they have to decide whether this is what they want to do or not. Being an artist do not necessarily mean you should be shallow-minded. You need to be versatile, obtain different knowledge from different careers and combine it with your artistic skills. In that way, your artistic career will never be difficult like for the past artist. You need to balance your life and most importantly, capital is one of the challenges in art career. So you need to plan on where you can get it because without capital, they can never be an art. Art is one career that requires a lot of money because of it is expensive. So that is why sometimes you tell people how much one piece costs. They become so surprised because they don't know how expensive art material is. So, but again, that does not mean art career is the only career that has difficulties only. All these careers, they have difficulties, they have advantages, and also they have disadvantages. It is a matter of preparing yourself. It is just a matter of being ready of what is to come. Because if you look, when we mean traditional careers, we're talking about careers that are most common in our communities. It is easy for us to pursue those careers because of we already have examples in our communities. Same applies with art. It is not that it is going to be or it is something that it's impossible to, to live out of. It is possible. You just need the nearest motivation or an example that you are going to draw your inspiration and motivation from. For the next edition of Creatives Under Lockdown, you can visit sabcnews.com or at SABC News on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. For SABC Digital News, I'm Larato Matala.